Spencer was one of the most important poets of the English Renaissance. The term Renaissance means rebirth and refers to the revival of interest in the classical cultures and literatures of ancient Greece and Rome that took place in Europe between the 14th and the 16th centuries. Spencer was born in London in 1552. Although he came of poor stock, he may have been related to the Midlands noble family of Spencer, who had been made wealthy through ship rearing. Spencer's relationship with Ireland was in many senses typical of the attitude of the English toward the Irish. In his time, he married Elizabeth Boyle, whom he was to memorialize in the Amorotti Sonnet and the Epithalamion. He was appointed Queen's Justice for Cork. He was buried in Westminster Abbey, close to the grave of Geoffrey Chaucer. The sonnet is fundamentally a short lyric, a stylized 14-line poem that developed in Italy in the Middle Ages. There are broadly three styles of sonnets, the Petrarchian, the Spenserian, the Shakespearean. Epithalamian Epithalamian is an ode written by Edmund Spencer as a gift to his bride Elizabeth Boy on their wedding day. The poem moves through the couplet's wedding day from the groom's impatient hours before dawn to the late hours of night after the husband and wife have consummated their marriage. This ode begins with an invocation to the muses to help the groom once the sun has risen the bride finally awakens and begins her procession to the bridal bower. The poem is in 24 stanza representing the hours of the day, with a total of 365 long lines of 5 feet or more, representing the days of the year. The poem draws together the universal and the temporal, the idea of love that is divine and transcendental, with a moral a earthly sensual love. Spencer's conception of love is firmly located in time, even as it is referred as lasting and underlined by time. The element of time is therefore central to the crafting of the poem, not just in its formal aspects, but as the level of the theme of love and its treatment as well. In stanza first, the groom calls upon the muses to inspire him to properly sing the praises of his beloved bride. Before the break of day, the groom urges the muses to head to his beloved's power, there to awaken her. Hymen, god of marriage, is already awakened her. The groom instructs the muses on their way to bridal chamber to gather all the fragrant flowers they can and decorate the path leading from the bridal bower to the door of the bride's chamber. Now the groom addresses his bride directly to awaken and the Phoebus, the sun god, is showing his glorious head. Then the groom urges the daughters of delight to attend to the bride. Here Spencer introduces the personifications of time in the hours that make up day night and the season. The groom then prays to Phoebus, who is both sun god and originator of the art, arts to give this one day of the year to him. Spencer shifts to the real world participants in the wedding ceremony, the inter entertainment and possible guests. The groom beholds his bride approaching and compares her to Phoebe clad in white that seems a virgin best. He then launches into a list of all her virtues standing with her virtues, starting with her eyes and eventually describing her whole body. He also praises her lively spirit, her sweet love, her chastity, her faith, her honor and her modesty. The bride, bride enters in a saint in the sense that she is a good Protestant Christian and she approaches this holy place with the 
appropriate humility the bride stands before the attar as the priest offers his blessings upon her and upon the marriage the groom calls for feasting and drinking turning his attention from the almighty by identifying the exact day of the wedding june 20 spencer allows the reader to fit this poetic description of the ceremony into real again focus on time the shakespeare is eager to be alone with his bride and so invokes the evening star to lead beside being eager to make love to his new bride the speaker is also hoping to conceive a child according to legend and tradition a child conceived on the summer would grow into spons- prosperity and wisdom the groom prays that no evil spirits or bad thoughts would reach the newly weds this night the groom notices sithia the moon peering through his window and prays to her for favorable wedding night he asks juno wife of zeus and goddess of marriage to make their union strong and sacred making it full fruitful spencer brings this ode to a major climax calling upon all the gods in the heavens to bear witness and shower their blessings upon the couple he wishes nothing other than a child from his union and the future generation will fill the earth with saints spencer follows elizabeth convention in returning to a self conscious meditation upon his ode itself he give her he this ode in place of the many ornaments which his bride should have had he paradoxically asks that it be for short time and endless monument for her draw, drawing the reader's attention back to the contrast between early time which eventually runs out and which lost forever in a state of perfection thank you